silence to me is a kind of noise that the more you focus on so-called emptiness or void the more you find within it the more information you perceive you could argue that sound doesn't actually exist it's always in a state of emerging or decaying it's never actually there hundreds of years ago sound was described as one of the dark senses and uh, was regarded as inferior Leonardo da Vinci thought it was inferior I've been a writer and uh, a curator and a musician and a composer and I d actually I don't think of myself as a sound artist you know my ambition when I was very young even before I was a teenager was to be a rock and roll star but one thing I do remember from my childhood was being very frightened of sound One of the characteristics of sound is that we can hear it and we interpret it even though we don't necessarily see its source. So we have good reason to distrust sound um, and we have some good reason for thinking that the world of things is reliable. We can design with sound in the same way that we design with color, or we design with line, or we design with three dimensions, or, or whatever. It basically comes down to the way you can work with sound within the digital domain, and, and maybe in a sense you are more of a designer um, than you are a composer in the traditional sense. Yeah. Also, of course, you've got the very clear difference of, of either working in within the space of the computer, which is a kind of non-space, or working within the air of, of rooms. The fact that you can generate vast universes of sound, but it has no place in which it, it exists. Uh, that's a very different way of working than, than say, playing a violin, um, where you're just, you know, stroking a bow across a string. I could sit with a pair of cymbals and, and play for hours, you know, with very fine differences of tonality and, and the air between the cymbals and uh, just the way I can shift that timbre and all I'm doing is moving my hands and listening and, and making fine adjustments that actually I don't know how they're being controlled but to do that in the digital domain would involve a huge amount of number crunching I think we're just at the beginning of trying to understand uh, the differences between working in the digital domain and, and working with analog. The, our idea of music has expanded dramatically to include ambient sound um, and what an audience might consider non-musical sounds. This um, group I run called Unknown Devices, the Laptop Orchestra, when it was started a lot of people bought laptop computers and they had some of those people had no experience of making music they didn't play an instrument 
So the laptop was their first instrument. What have you got? Just sort of jangling things. Jangling things? Uh, okay. Things. Uh, you could go over there. there. When I started directing these improvisation sessions at London College of Communication, there were no preconceptions, there were no there were no standards set up for what you had to be capable of doing or what you had to bring. And um, so it was as much a su surprise to me as it was to them um, when they all turned up with their various devices. That's why I called the group Unknown Devices, because you never knew what people were going to bring. Try and find a common language, don't you? Try and find a place where I think it's what Alistair said, you know, you find a place. That's that's enough for it. A place where you can kind of be together. Um, but then also it's nice to push it sometimes. You know, <laughs> and go too far and push people into areas that maybe they don't want to go. And then just Digital technology reconstitutes sound as numbers and uh, gosh. Should we, should we, uh, just a yeah, break for a second. Yeah.